Ten years ago, ICT was chosen as the main driver for our socio-economic transformation and for achieving our national vision 2020. In doing so, we would leapfrog from a predominantly agriculture-based economy to a service-based economy powered by ICT. What we've seen over the last 10 years is that Rwanda has grown by over 8% annually for the last 10 years. And uh, so we are on track to become a middle-income status country. And RDB's role is to promote the private sector contribution to making Rwanda a middle-income status country by the year 2020. Rwanda has chosen ICT as a key enabler and uh, a, an engine of transformation uh, for national economic development. And specifically, government has uh, intervened in uh, key sectors, uh, for example, infrastructure development. Um, there's been an investment by the government to have a nationwide optic fiber infrastructure. Broadband is a key driver for social economic transformation and what BSC is doing is actually to make it available everywhere in the country. We are spread all over the country. We, the, the, the nation we have 30 districts, BSC is everywhere. Name it, the smallest location of the country, we are everywhere with the same level of infrastructure for all Rwandans. This is the network operation and control room of BSC. It is from here that we control the fiber infrastructure and the data center infrastructure to ensure that we provide the best customer experience. Rwanda's business environment, according to the World Bank, has been the second most dynamic over the last six years. Uh, the World Bank has a tracking system where they see countries that are reforming the business environment and how they're, they're doing that. And that is because we've been very bold in terms of the business environment reforms that we've done, and we've made lots of reforms, lots of changes. And because of that, what that has resulted in, Rwanda today is ranked the third most competitive African economy. Uh, our regulatory approach is really uh, a participatory uh, kind of process. Uh, we make sure that every regulation that we want to, to issue uh, goes through a consultative process where all stakeholders uh, give us their views before we initiate any regulation and we make sure that at every uh, stage before the approval by the regulatory board, the operators, consumers have been involved and that's how we have been able to manage the, that participatory approach in terms of regulations. As of today, the Rwanda market has three GSM operators, MTN, uh, Tigo and, and Ayrton. Uh, MTN, MTN Rwanda, uh, as of today, we are, we are talking about 69% market share more than 3.2 million uh, subscribers, which actually put us as leader uh, in telecom business in, uh, in, in Rwanda. And to be in, in such position, and to maintain the leadership in telecom in Rwanda market, uh, give us uh, more responsibility and more challenge actually in our business in order to, 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 to keep our customers uh, uh, satisfied and happy with our network and with, uh, with our uh, uh, services. You will see in the coming year in Rwanda the development of value-added service, the software industry, uh, the ISP industry. You will see a lot of young people with innovation being able to access the market because the, the barrier and the costs that were previously associated with that has been removed by uh, both regulatory investment, uh, business environment. So, and uh, that's why as a private sector, we are organizing ourselves and looking at what we need to do in order to take advantage of all those opportunities. Visa's whole approach to delivering financial services is, is through ICT infrastructure. So the reason that we're here in Rwanda is because it had that infrastructure for us to utilize. Now, reaching underserved customers requires new business models and potentially new technologies. But because of the groundwork and foundation that Rwanda has laid in terms of ICT connectivity, we're able to utilize mobile connectivity, basic landline infrastructure, um, things of that nature to reach populations that we haven't been able to reach before. ICT buses uh, are helping to bring ICT services uh, to the citizens uh, within uh, rural areas of the country, uh, again to help 
in terms of bringing uh, ICT for development closer to the people and making it a reality. And essentially this is a bus with ICT computers connected to internet and we deliver specific programs, uh, training programs uh, to rural people. This could be school going children, could be local business people, uh, local government people, women, uh, different groups of people within the rural setting. And they move from uh, sector to sector across the country, uh, targeting areas where they do not have other forms of access to ICT services. So the One Laptop Per Child program not only brings computers to schools, but it also brings electricity, it brings access to internet, to digital knowledge, e-books, e in the different communities in the rural area. So it's a quite, uh, it's quite a challenge, challenging program in terms of uh, having a lack of infrastructure in some of these areas. But it's also an opportunity where every, every school that we touch, we also bring to the community power, we're bringing uh, access to digital knowledge for the communities, we're bringing uh, a basic ICT understanding, not only for the kids, but also to the parents. We've covered already all districts in the country. We are now at the next administrative level of uh, the country. We have 30 districts, and we are now looking at uh, touching each sector. Each sector will have a school with laptops, so all kids in Rwanda, especially in the rural area, can benefit from this program. The overall vision of our sector is to be able to provide excellent services to the public coming to get travel documents, that means Rwandans, and to foreigners who visit Rwanda through issuing visas and permits. We put in place uh, a single platform where um, we automate workflows, uh, we share documents electronically, we implement electronic forms, and everything is in, all in one single platform where the entire government is actually integrated. So the concept is having a virtual office where anybody would apply to come to Rwanda, they get the, the visa within three days, wherever it will be. And it, it even shortens their distance to come to, to apply for the, for the visas. It was made it more secure because you can be able to apply yourself for wherever you will be. And you can even track to, understand, to be able to know exactly where the status of your application is. So a person feels secure to come to Rwanda and, uh, and the, the service is very efficient and makes Rwanda very, very, very competitive, especially in, in, in tourism and skis attraction. The future plan of a, a smart ID card in Rwanda is, uh, uh, first of all, to get all services in one card, uh, including the uh, financial uh, applications, uh, which are, will allow the population to get their financial services in one card, and also to get their medical uh, services in uh, one card, and uh, different applications uh, related to uh, online authentication in different uh, public and uh, uh, private services. The government has prioritized the uh, health sector as one of the key sectors and we have implemented uh, a number of key initiatives within the health sector. Uh, on the one hand, to help uh, manage uh, the sector effectively, but on the other, uh, to also help uh, the citizens in terms of accessing health care services. Uh, we've also done a number of other specific projects, uh, whether at hospital level, at healthcare level, at the Ministry of Health level, to make sure the entire health sector is integrated and is able to track and monitor its own progress and deliver health care more efficiently to the citizens. In the effort to make ICT relevant for all the critical sectors for the economy, we have specifically implemented the eSoco platform uh, for the agriculture sector. Uh, essentially, the eSoco creates a link between uh, a farmer and the market. And so it bridges that gap whereby the farmer is able to establish uh, what is the actual price of his produce uh, in different markets in the country. And then they are better uh, equipped and informed so they can make decisions on pricing for their own produce. eSoco is a good example uh, of an application that is helping bring ICT uh, to the citizens, the people in the rural areas. Rwanda's development agenda is a citizen-centric development agenda and so as we implement ICT initiatives we always strive to make sure that uh, we're taking ICT to the citizens.
Carnegie Mellon University in Rwanda is a new graduate program in Rwanda. We're currently offering a master's in information technology and our first class began this semester. We have 24 students. In the next two years, we'll be continuing to offer that master's and then we will add a master's degree in electrical and computer engineering. RDB, the Rwanda Development Board, is the government uh, organization that is overseeing Carnegie Mellon University in Rwanda and providing uh, the facilities and the support that we need to develop our program here. Uh, we have very strong interactions with the IT division of Rwanda Development Board and all of our working with them in strategic ways uh, is aimed towards helping to develop an entire center of excellence in ICT as a regional resource in the area. The overarching goal of the government um, is to position Rwanda um, as an ICT hub uh, for the region. And for this to happen, uh, we need to create an ecosystem where there is a vibrant ICT industry and a lot of innovations are coming out of the ICT sector. And so, um, to that end, uh, the government has created an innovation center. Uh, this is uh, a specific uh, space that has been created where ICT entrepreneurs uh, get access to various resources. Uh, for example, expertise, they get to meet uh, senior uh, entrepreneurs who mentor the younger ones uh, that are coming up. Uh, they get access to research and development uh, resources. Um, there's a strong linkage, for example, between the innovation center with Carnegie Mellon University and the other uh, universities within the country. And also a strong linkage uh, between uh, all the upcoming ideas uh, with the private sector, established companies and startup companies to make sure that we can move from uh, ideas uh, to solutions and companies uh, being created uh, in the ICT sector. Mobile money is one of our key services. And, and, and empty out Rwanda, considered not only in Rwanda, and considered uh, uh, globally that one of the success stories we made in mobile money uh, business and services. So far, so far we have, we have more than 500,000 subscribers on mobile money, uh, out of 3.2 million subscribers, and uh, that's the, the, the usage is, is, is very high. I can say that we made big big difference uh, uh, in people's life with, the, with mobile money services. Visa fundamentally believes in the electronification of financial services and cash-based economies like Rwanda. You don't get the benefit of efficiency from doing things electronically like you do in some other markets. So our whole intent when we came to Rwanda was to deliver financial services to mass market and underserved consumers through ICT foundations. Rwanda has done such a fantastic job of, of laying that foundation for us to utilize, whether or not it's through mobile networks, which is a, a fantastic way to reach a new market segment for Visa, or through other types of infrastructure that Rwanda has already implemented. We have a, a host of opportunities and a host of ways in which we can reach a new market segment through electronic financial services in Rwanda. The government has actually set up Rwanda Development Board as a one-stop uh, center. Uh, specifically from ICT standpoint, we have actually put in place uh, a software platform uh, that helps facilitate uh, investors in terms of registering their businesses. Uh, we put together all the key services, for example, immigration services, uh, revenue services, um, key services that any company would need. They do not have to move around uh, different government departments. Everything is all found in one place here at the uh, Rwanda Development Board. Now there is major investment that needed to be done in order to lower the cost of communication in Rwanda. So the government embarked on a multi-million dollar, hundreds of, more than a hundred million dollar investment in laying down fiber optic to cover all of Rwanda, more than 2,500 kilometers. The government of Rwanda has also, in order to lower significantly the cost of international bandwidth, bought invested $10 million. So this brought, this brought the cost of uh, international bandwidth 
down by a six. That means, let's say it was $700, now it's $120. What does it mean both for the telco and ISP, but as well for the citizen? Is that mean that more people can be connected, that more, more business can be connected, but also more innovation can, uh, can happen. We do recognize that um, investors want stability and predictability when they come to a country. Predictable also in terms of the costs that are associated to doing business in a country. And one of the assurances we give an investor is that they will not worry about corruption costs, which are normally unpredictable because you don't know how much corruption costs. So um, we assure them of that because over the years we've been able to fight corruption. We have no tolerance for corruption at all. The future plans of ICT in Rwanda uh, are uh, first and foremost uh, moving towards more and more integration as well as uh, private sector uh, development and to ensure that ICT development uh, is not just uh, being done in government but is led by the private sector. And to that end, uh, we have specifically uh, identified six clusters and uh, these clusters are the ones we're focusing on. The first one uh, is business process outsourcing. The second cluster is in the mobile application development space. Uh, again, uh, we're seeing the fastest growth uh, in technology happening within the mobile area. The third area that we've also prioritized is the area of cloud computing. We realize that there's still a lot of gaps in terms of uh, infrastructure, especially within organizations. And so uh, we're promoting cloud computing as a faster way of being able to get uh, ICT services being rolled out uh, by overcoming uh, the hurdle of having to have infrastructure within an organization to be able to uh, have uh, ICT services in place. Uh, another area that we have also prioritized is uh, IT education and training. The other two sectors we have prioritized, one is the IT security, and lastly, uh, we have also prioritized the uh, area of e-government. RDB's vision is to continue to become a key driver for Rwanda's economy to modernize. Uh, today we have um, uh, developed a lot of modernization programs. For example, uh, you can register a company online, you can get a visa to Rwanda online, um, you can do a lot of your services within Rwanda online, but we uh, want to modernize the country more. For example, uh, we want to become a cashless economy and use online transactions and payments as much as possible. So we are going to be central to modernizing our economy in order to become a service-based, modern, middle-income status country that Rwanda aspires to be. Going forward, and uh, we working with all the stakeholders, private sector, civil society, uh, to make sure that uh, we're all moving together.